Hi there, Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and today in What's in the Box, well, you probably guessed it, it's some clamps. Let's have a look at what's in the box. So, safety first, get my gloves on here. Um, a few weeks ago, Clean Energy and uh, Canadian Solar came out here and we did a little project together. Some of you may have seen that. Uh, I'll link it up here. And uh, we installed a, a bunch of um, lovely Canadian solar panels um, onto a roof here at the Smart Energy Lab. And we used the new COM-T uh, tilts. Now, they sent me a whole lot of boxes and I'll talk about the other products in a second. But um, basically, this is what you get when you choose one of those clamp options. So uh, this is the PV Easy Rack Solar Roof Clip Lock Interface 406 with U opening for Clean Energy um, rails. So let's have a look what's in the box. So as you can see here, we've got a nicely packed set and they fit in beautifully. And these are the 406s with the U-shape and uh, the rubber interface there. So um, we'll talk about why that's there and why sometimes it doesn't have to be there, depending on uh, galvanic uh, reactions. So that's what's in the box. Of course, there is a whole range of products that come in the same sort of box for everything from uh, the Clip Lock 406, 305, uh, the Universal um, clamps, which I'm really excited by, uh, the splice kits and the COM-T uh, commercial kits, uh, commercial tilts. So let's have a look at some of those and how you might use them. Now this is a Clip Lock uh, 700 series roof and there are various options that we could use. Uh, for instance, we've got the um, Clip Lock 406 U-shaped uh, with a a galvanic separation in here. Now, of course, I haven't got a tool with me, but that's basically how they're going on. Gives you a large surface area with lots of options. Uh, here we've got eight mounting points that we could attach to on this for running rails in any direction. You could even go diagonal if you had to, I suppose. Uh, the That's going to give a very, very solid uh, clamp. Now, there's a large surface area in contact with this type of roof profile. And that's one of the reasons why uh, there is that rubber interface there. Um, so uh, it's creating a, uh, a barrier for dissimilar metals. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about that in a second. But first up, I want to show you some of the other products they've got here. I mean, they come in a matte black anodized finish, which is really cool. I mean, if you've got a um, black edged panel, you want the whole thing just to blend in. So they do all their products that I've seen so far in both um, anodized silver aluminium and anodized black aluminium. So uh, that's really nice. So that's the uh, Clip Lock 406. Now we've also got profiles for your thin edged long run roofs like your three, Clip Lock 305. Um, and also that comes in black as well. So wow, uh, they've really got everything covered here uh, in terms of color. So these also have that um, galvanic separation uh, inside the bracket because there's a large surface area that these will clamp onto onto the material. In a minute you'll see why that has an impact on um, the similar metals and considerations of galvanic isolation. Uh, lastly, we've got the new uh, Universal uh, Clip Lock. Now, Universal as in it fits a whole range of roof profiles. Uh, I believe it's something like 30, I don't know, it's an awful lot of roof profiles, but basically this clamp here can be adjusted to suit a wide range of roof profiles. So here we go, um, applied to this one, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got three mounting holes on the top there to give you flexibility on what you're attaching and where, uh, say for L feet, etc. And uh, it also comes in black, so uh, there's, there's the two color choices there. Really like it. Uh, now, <laughs> in that video that I linked to before, we actually tested one of these in a bit of a fun way. First, we tried to pull over a massive pine tree. Well, 
Of course, we couldn't pull it over with a little trip carrier and we eventually broke these clamps pulling on it. Then we thought we'd try something less vigorous and uh, we tried pulling a Navara uh, with my four-wheel drive troop carrier in four-wheel drive and we had both of them t doing a tug of war rear to rear and this clamp lasted the distance. We had all four wheels spinning on my troopie. You know, that's a pretty heavy vehicle. And uh, uh, eventually we broke it, but it did take some time. So we got a lot of power um, on those vehicles and this clamp stood up to it. We basically put a chain through the hole here and uh, clamped onto it to chain this direction, chain this direction, and away we went. So anyway, check that video out from Clenergy. Um, it's kind of fun. There's a bit of acting involved too. Uh, of course, when you're doing rails, you want to be able to splice them together. So the splice um, kits for the Eco Rail come in both anodized black and silver. So that's really nice. And lastly, uh, but certainly not least, is the COM-T uh, little tilts. Now these are designed as a tilt system for a commercial roof, um, which has a relatively uh, low tilt angle required. So you can adjust the tilt angle based on the spacing of these to some extent, um, but also they're very uh, flexible in terms of location because you can put them onto L feet using any of these uh, clamp options as well. So really like these, but there's a couple of tips we learned when using them. It really helps to have an extension bit uh, on your hex driver because when you're trying to get down in here, uh, your driver gets in the way uh, unless you've got a long extension bit. So there's a little pro tip, use an extension bit uh, and uh, you can pre-tighten these uh, at the rear, uh, which, sorry, this is the rear underneath the panel side. Uh, and then if you've got uh, a rounded head one, you can come in at a bit of an angle to finish that off. Of course, you should try and get the torque settings correct on these uh, so that you don't over tension them. So that's the, the low end and that's the high end. Oh, I've got them around the wrong way of the COM-T. So let's get to this issue about corrosion. Now, I'm no metallurgist and uh, I really uh, learned quite a lot from a presentation that Clenergy gave me on the similar metals. And there's a few key points I wanted to point out. Now, the first thing I said to them is, uh, how come the universal clamp doesn't have that usual barrier? We're expecting to see some sort of galvanic isolation on a clamp. And they said, well, actually it's not required, Glenn. Uh, you just got to understand the, the, um, the physics of metallurgy and dissimilar metals. Now, really basic stuff here, but a dissimilar metal is where you have a more reactive um, metal, and that's usually the anode, and it's corroded. So the more reactive will be corroded, while the less reactive, the cathode, is not corroded. But that corrosion occurs only under a certain range of conditions, and those conditions are things like the conductivity of the fluid, i.e. if you've got water, how conductive is it? Um, the surface passivation, whether it's got an oxide layer or not, or what the oxide layer is made up of. Whether there's any contaminants in those liquids which accelerate corrosion. Um, the surface area, now this is a big one, the surface area that's wet, and lastly the temperature. Now, the second to last point there, the surface area is very, very small on these clamps. Basically just the jaws here are the only part making contact. So if you see here, I've really got a few millimeters of contact. Uh, and therefore, when the sums are done in terms of is there a potential for um, corrosion, it turns out there isn't. So there's no requirement for that uh, galvanic barrier uh, in the universal clamp. So if you're wondering why it doesn't have it, and that's what their um, engineers tell me, because they're the experts in this stuff. They make a lot of products and they've tested all of this. So I'm pretty happy with that. So anyway, um, that's what's in the box for today. Uh, if you want to watch more of these, just uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, maybe give us a like or two. But otherwise, I'll see you on the next What's in the Box?